Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. Favre's job was saved by a teenager. Just after half time, Favre was gone. He was gone. They were they were they were printing off his release papers in, in the boardroom. He was gone. I'm telling you, the man would have been sacked after this game if it ended with an Augsburg wing. And that's no disrespect to Augsburg, but quite frankly, you're not on our level and we should be beating you quite comfortably. However, this is Favre and this is Dortmund, aka second half FC, you feel me? So it just went a bit left, and when Haaland came on, the game completely changed and at the end of that game, there's only two words that Favre should have said in that team talk. And those two words should have been directed straight to Haaland. Looked him in the eyes, two of his pupils, and said these exact two words. Thank you. Because if it wasn't for Haaland, whoo, you know what I'm saying? Favre would have been looking at options of where he's going on his on his holiday, his little break that he's going to be taking once he's out of a job, because that's tough. He would have been gone. He would have had to say goodbye. Contract expired with no badges. You feel me? Haaland really saved the day, and, and he didn't just put Favre on his back. He put the team on his back. He put Borussia Dortmund as a whole on his back, because it's quite an embarrassment to lose to, to some of the sides we're losing to with the team that we possess man this is like one of the best Dortmund teams I've seen in a very very long time and it's shocking that we're not even really challenging for the Bundesliga title like we're, we're sat in fourth <laughs> yeah we're sat in fourth I, I think we're in fourth I'm not even sure if we're in fourth I I, I could be making that up right now well it's, yeah we're sat in fourth um we're not even far off first we're not far, far off at all but it's just the fact that we're not even near first like the team is too, too good to be where it is. And there's a lot of questions surrounding Favre's future. For me, I have said that Favre will possibly leave at the end of the season. I don't think Dortmund are going to be that rational to sack him during the season when really and truly there still could be a there still could be hope that we you know finish second or even win the Bundesliga who knows because this league right now is one of the most unpredictable leagues in Europe so there's still a high possibility that we could you know do a madness and just get top two or, or even first so I don't think the board are going to be that rational to sack him even after some poor results that we've had and possibly going to have some poor results going forward. But uh, at the end of the season, it may come down to a sit down, a chit chat, a cup of coffee and just say, look, we, I think it's best we part ways. And then in the summer, we take a nice slow process to find the right man to replace Fabre. Ideally, Pochettino, who is out of a job, could be Allegri, who would return in the summer because he's had his uh, year break that he wanted. So th those are two high class options and there's other options that we probably would look at you know like an Eric Ten Hag or uh, even the Atalanta manager or maybe even the Lazio manager I don't know but those are options because they're doing very well with their respected teams with that being said Hallen came on today as you can probably tell by the title and from just Twitter and and the football world as a whole Hallen came on today and scored a hat-trick and and it was absolutely it, it's just astonishing to just see how calm and composed and settled he looked in the team. Now, the first hat-trick, the first goal for Haaland came uh, from an assist from Sancho, actually. A, a nice slotted through ball. And we have to give respect to Sancho. I mean, all the limelight now is going to go on um, Haaland. But in this game, for me, Sancho still played a, a brilliant game. You know, he was causing problems. He had a few shots that didn't really, you know... Uh, uh, threatened the keeper too much but you know he still was doing the madness and uh, his footwork was still there and then this was just a, a, a little sign of what he was, he was trying to do all games nice nice pass through the defense and uh, Haaland got onto it and he just took it first time and it just went it went bottom right it was it just tucked off and the fact of the matter is if you watch the replay or you see any foot, um, footage Haaland didn't even really look at the goal he did not look at the direction of the goal he just knew where to place the ball that is Sign no, th those or that is it is, <laughs> yeah, it is. No, that is whatever it is, it's showing signs that this guy is going to be a clinical striker because th how you don't even look in the direction of the goal and still park it in the bottom right corner, you know, what I'm saying you're doing a madness. Second goal, you know, it, it was a bit of a you know, say VAR and that tried to you know, try to shove. Nah, we ain't doing none of that. Um, it was clearly, it was clearly onside. The goal, it was clearly onside. I don't know why there was even question marks over that goal, um, but nevertheless, uh, we have to pay. We have to clap. We have to clap for Hazard because Haaland couldn't probably wouldn't have even gotten a hat trick if it wasn't for Hazard because this, this, this was literally 
should I should I should I gift this kid a fantastic debut or should I get myself in the statistics? Should I should I get myself in in you know should I get myself a goal? Because he could he could have he could have just shot. He was right in front of the goal. You know it was one of them sweaty goals where it's just you. It was just you, your other player, and the keeper. That was basically it. And he had an option whether he could have just shot and placed it in the goal because he was right in front of the goal or passed it and given it to Haaland. And he actually passed it, gave it to Haaland. Haaland slotted it, and that was Haaland's second goal. Um, and I just, I just, I had my hand on my heart. I was like, massive respect to Hazard because he did not have to do that at all. And that is what you, that, that is when you believe in the kid. That is when you believe in your striker. And that is just what team play is, man. That is what you do, you know? And and Haaland really, I, I know Haaland really appreciated that. The third goal, um, Haaland was basically just through on goal. Uh, literally just through on goal. Defenders were trying to keep up with him, but I didn't know that Haaland possessed such quickness. The, what the man is, the kid is quick and strong at the same time. And um, to finish, he just tucked it off. It was a tuck, it was a finesse. You know, it was a running finesse. And um, it just part, it passed, it just parked in the bottom left corner, and that was it. That's all she wrote. Three goals, done and dusted. Um, that man got three goals in like what 25, 30 minutes. Absolute madness. And then there's all this debate now, you know, happening on Twitter that oh, he should have started. You know, it was wrong to keep him on the bench, which in some some ways I agree with. But at the same time, everything happens for a reason, and I don't think Hallam would have made the impact he made if he had started the game. And this is exactly what we did with Paco Alcacer when he first joined Borussia Dortmund. We started him off the bench. Uh, he used to just make his appearances off the bench, come on, score, do a madness. And most of his goals, majority of his goals actually, came from him coming on in, in uh, you know, half time or just after half time. And I don't want them to repeat that or I don't want Favre to repeat that with Haaland. But at the same time, if it happens, it happens. You know, you, you know, players have to adjust to a league. Players have to adjust to a system, the tactics. You know, it's different from training because, you know, when, when you're in training, it's just you, the manager and your teammates. When you're when you're playing in front of, you know, however many fans there were in the stadium, 30,000, 20,000, I don't know. And, and you know, you've got the lights on, you've got the cameras on, you, 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 you your match is televised. It's completely different, man. That like, pressure is on, you know, and obviously there's a big buzz around your name. It kind of makes sense for him to start off the bench when you think about it in that way. And uh, it, it worked out. So, you know, where, whereas I do agree with people that say, you know, it should have started. At the same time, I think it was it was a nice... I think, I think it worked out better that he started off the bench. And also, it when he came on, you could tell the, the shift in the team. just It just it just went. Like, everything just went forward. Like, it's like we trusted... The, the team trusted the attacking areas. It's like we, we, we knew... We had a striker that we could believe in. We knew we had a striker that could bang in goals. Despite this kid being 19 years of age, we knew that this man could finish the, 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 the job at the end of the day. And everything just started going forward. The first half, it was pass, 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 pass. Typical Dortmund. Possession, pass, pass. Lose the ball, get hit on the counter, get the ball back. Pass, 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 pass. Like one or two shots. But then, as soon as Haaland came on, it was like... Get the ball forward, get the ball forward, pass the ball into the box, cross the ball into the box. You know, there was one instance where Haaland could have got his hat-trick before he actually got his hat-trick and um, it came from a cross, I believe it was Hakimi, I believe it was, with a cross into the box and uh, it just, it, it got, the defender cleared it off, but it, it almost went to Haaland and he almost got a goal and it was just like, we weren't seeing that in the first half, it was very much just pass, 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 try and get into the box, try and... You know, can't do that now, big man. We got, we got, we got, we got the, we got the target man up the top. You know what I'm saying? We got the, I don't even know what to call him. Advance forward, poacher forward, pressing forward, complete forward, target man. He's just got everything. Haaland's got everything. But nonetheless, man, it was a fantastic, fantastic performance from Haaland. Um, what a way to make an impact. You want to make an impact, you come on and you score a hat-trick on your debut at 19 years of age. Absolute madness, man. Anyway. I'm going to end this here. If you have enjoyed it, then please be sure to leave a like on the video. Let me know your thoughts on Haaland. Do you think he's going to succeed at Dortmund? Do you think this was a one match, one luck? You, you know, do you think he's going to struggle now? Or do you think this is going to be a continuous thing where Haaland is scoring every single game? Just like he was doing when he played for um, Salzburg in uh, the Austria 
Bundesliga. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Um, also, let me know what you guys think about the Bundesliga this season because, like I said, I think it's one of the most unpredictable seasons we've had in the Bundesliga in a very long time. Man. I can't even call the last time the, the Bundesliga was this unpredictable. So, let me know who you think is going to win the Bundesliga. Let me know your thoughts on the Bundesliga. Let me know your thoughts on Haaland. Um, also, I want to know your thoughts on Marco Royce as well because I didn't mention this, but Marco Royce should have really had a hat trick um, in this game. The amount of ch the chances he had and should have buried. It's a, it's a bit ridiculous, you know. I had pe the people on Twitter was talking about some what's going on. Like, Marco Royce, are you? some girl was like, baby, are you okay? Because it, <laughs> it was looking a bit sticky. But um, let me know your thoughts on everything that happened today in the match. And I'll catch you guys for another sideline politics, I guess. I don't know how we're going to do this. I just wanted to get this one out there because I wanted to talk about Mr. Halan. But I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching. Peace. Came through trippin' Aquafina, I'm sippin' 15, kept a weapon on me. Blow make bitches, I'm my my business, stack chicken like what it's gon' be. Crew in the cut, hey, you want us, spread run when I tell a peace. Love is love.